Добрый день, шановные глядачи. Сегодня у нас в гостях голландская журналистка и моя добрая знакомая Франка. И она завитала на нашу кухню. И сегодня мы поговорим про проблему беженцев, утекачев, с которой сутакается. На сегодня ее развяз и поговорим про разные аспекты этой проблемы. И, конечно же, закранем правооборонщий пункт погляду на эту ситуацию в Европе. И таким чином начнем. Мы тут в Беларуси в некотором смысле паза этим контекстом, а тем не менее активно сочим за информацией, читаем, что зараз робится в Европе и насколько соправды вот это вот кризис и выклик у текачей для сегодняшнего евразвязу. It's a challenge in many ways because, well, one thing that's happening now is that some countries are closing borders and a big part of the European Union, at least the Schengen region, was that we did not close borders. So the whole idea of Schengen is already gone and I'm not surprised if anytime soon actually Schengen will be gone. Um, and it's also a question about dividing uh, the numbers of uh, refugees because now some countries take in much more than others. Italy and Greece can hardly bear what the, the amount of people and we have to divide it and we have to, have to do that in a just way. It needs to be fair according to population but maybe also to wealth and there is no um, key to, divi to dividing it yet and we also don't know how many people there will be and we also don't know whether we should maybe be involved in actually solving the war they are fleeing from. So at the moment it, it really shows a lot of uh, problems for the European Union and there is no union in it. Every country makes its own uh, policy about it and has its own ideas so they are not, they don't have much common ground generally. So yes, I think it's a bigger challenge than the euro crisis with Greece actually. Mm -hmm. Зрозуміло, а ось непосредно до Голландії, ось ця хваля міграції утікачів, вона вже дійшла, тому що ми читаємо про Германію, Австрію. І коли так, то як люди місцеві реагують на утікачів? Що вони думають, що вони роблять? Чи є там якісь дискусії? Ну, воголь, що відбувається зараз? Well, it has reached the Netherlands already, but not in such a big state as in Germany and Hungary because they go there first because they don't come by plane. So we have thousands and thousands of new asylum seekers, but it's not there will be much more soon. So it's it's just started and there is this problem in the Netherlands that the um, uh, houses for asylum seekers where people stay at first when they are waiting for their status to go through their procedure they are all full because the people who get a status they have they are entitled to social housing so cheap housing provided by state and um, they are all full so that means that new refugees have no place in those asylum seekers houses and they sleep like in sports halls with 500 men or 1,000 men, so that's really a, a big change in a, in a village or in a town. So that's one thing that we are seeing now. And also you see that in the areas where a lot of social housing is, people are not very happy that there will be so many uh, new people from different cultures coming in, which I personally think is understandable because if one third of your neighborhood changes overnight that's a bad thing and somehow our system works the way that the weakest people in our society actually have the most uh, problems from this big wave of refugees coming in and not the rich people but the poor people with lesser perspectives and what happens if they complain they are told that they are racists which they might or might not be but they don't look into the actual problems that they are addressing when they say that they don't want this newcomer. So it's actually, we are, we are already looking, f we are looking ahead at some specific um, uh, problems in society. But on the, on the other hand, in general, if it's not going to be that all your neighbors are, will be refugees, there are two different uh, perspectives. One of them is uh, that people are afraid of those Syrian people coming in. They say like, aren't they jihadis? How do we know? Well, we don't, there is risk, yes. Jihadis have less reason to fly, to fly from Islamic State, but still. Um, uh, and also that they fear that this influx of Muslims could change our society, or they just say that those people are just seeking for luck. They have no reason to actually leave where they are. They are just coming to take our wealth or something like that. And the other 
part of society and now at the moment this is becoming predominant is that they just feel like a, a, a like a personal need to help that people act actively want to help and actively want to make sure that the people who come to the Netherlands have a good life in the Netherlands and those two reactions are really um, together they, they, they belong together because a lot of this um, wish to do good to help the refugees actually comes because other people say oh it's a pity they didn't all drown on this boat and then it makes people so angry that they act act actually get activated whereas before they were not and they just expected solutions from politics so it's interesting how t how those two opinions actually interact a lot um, and also which is interesting to see at least to me is that those two opinions um, don't see the good points of each other's opinion because there are valid points in the opinion I don't agree with. I know who there are and I think they should be solved. And I guess it's the other way around too, that there are a lot of weak points in my opinion. And actually that should also be solved, but there is no interaction, no real interaction between um, those two groups to come to a common solution. And that's, I think that's a pity. Ну, вот цікаво, что вот э, вчера литерально я телефоновал нашей коллеге в Париж, и она казала, что у них там довольно такое великое возвышение. Люди соправды собирают речи, собирают ежу, шмахтоп готовы предоставить свое житло для этих утекачевых, что это некое такое целое хваля, некое вот такое вот э, солидарности, которая ранее, может быть, в меньшей ступени назиралась. Але я хотел бы вот э, сказать такое назирание, что мне сдается, что есть полная разница помеж реакциями на эту ситуацию в Заходней Европе и в Украинах Центральной Европы, ну, те, Сходней Европы, как она ранее называлась. И что мне подается, что в Центральной Европейской Урады и, в принципе, громадство, оно вельми наполохо на этой проблеме, и они бы не хотели никаким чином принимать этих иммигрантов у себя. Well, it, there are several points. I think it's definitely true that at the moment refugees are treated worse in Central Europe than in Western or traditional Western Europe, but it has several reasons. And one of them is geographical, very simple, that they arrive in Central Europe first. And that means that there are thousands and thousands, whereas at least in the Netherlands, we can a bit decide on how many come to our country. So it's easier to manage. And that's, that's a big difference. And I don't know, I cannot say for my country that we would actually behave well if we would have this amount of refugees as Hungary, for example, is facing. So that, that's one reason. But I think another thing is indeed mentality that we are already a multicultural society, have been a multicultural cultural society for long. So we know that an influx of strangers does not necessarily change us. It might change our country, but it will not change my life. So that's a difference. And also we are already very familiar with this idea of taking in refugees because we have had pro uh, programs, for example, during the Balkan Wars to actually invite refugees and give them a home in the Netherlands. So that's that are several reasons. And I know for Hungary that there is this um, pregnant nationalism that Hungar Hungarians are actually better. Um, this is going on, not with all Hungarians, of course, but this is also mm -hmm. happening, this fear of strangers. And whereas this is changing in the Netherlands too, if I compare it to, for example, 2000, 2000 actually, then we were less afraid of strangers than we are now. So it has, it has changed in the last two dec decades for sure, but still we are not that closed and we also see opportunities in strangers coming in we all that's that's i guess the core of my country that we seek to make profit and if strangers can bring us profit they are very welcome if they can't it's a different story and then we, we try to be humane or something like that no, у нас в Беларуси мы напевно не маем такого досвіду стосунков с людьми, которые отличаются культурно и внешне. У нас не было никаких таких хвалев иммиграции, с которой, может быть, долгий период часу сутыкалась Европа. И наши граждане в основном отримывают информацию про эту проблему сродкового массовой информации из других неких ресурсов, сайтов, телевизии. И тем не менее на форумах вельми активно обмерковывается эта проблема, и можно побачить разные меркования, и я вот выделил тут некоторые типовые, как бы, какие я сутыкаюсь с такими вельми часто. Одно из распространенных таких меркований, что утекачи бегут 
Минета в Европу, что на думку значит, тех комментаторов означает, что они выбирают просто на просто на лепшее жить, они убегают не от войны и не застаются, скажем, в безопасных местах региона, там в Турции, в Иордании и в Ливане. Well, that's that's often heard in the Netherlands as well, and in 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 the core it is probably true. But then there is a lot of other things that are also true, like one thing searching for a better life. I don't know. I think I've been searching for a better life since the day I was born. I think it's a natural thing for humans to do, so it's not something to blame them for. And then another thing, if you look at, for example, Lebanon and Jordan, if you just see how quick Islamic State has progressed, you don't know how long it will be safe there. And another thing is, yes, you might be living in a refugee camp in Jordan, and yes, maybe there are no bombs falling on your head, but your kids cannot go to school. That means that they will not have any future without any schooling you will not be sure that you'll get the medical care that you need so yes you might be safe from war but you will not be safe from poverty and all the other things that deprived people um, have to deal with so it is it is not as simple as just that they are safe in these refugee camps ну и в протях этой же как бы идеи то что мовляв яны Утекачи имкнутся в те краины его развязу, которые экономично больше поспеховые, где лепшее социальное обеспечение. И тому, мовляв, больше утекачу имкнется в немецчину, там, где, ну, и некие иншие усходные европейские краины, они застаются, снова уж, в беспечных инших краинах Европы, как там Хорватия, Венгрия, это они ведут, там, где Сербия. It's probably also about wealth, yes, but it's also about the way refugees are taken into society. If in Hungary you have to stay in a camp with a big fence around it, you have less of a life than you would have in Germany, where actually if you get a status, you are free. You will get social support, yes. So yes, there will be money for you without working if you go to Germany and you're a refugee. And yes, that attracts people, but most refugees actually want to work and want to be a part of at least a society, it's not only the money that they want to go to Germany for, it's mostly that they are actually free to travel and free to live where they want and actually be a human and not just a refugee. And I think, I don't know, if I were them, I would probably feel the same and would probably exactly the same, so I understand that. And yes, they are safe in Hungary, yes, but they are not much more than safe. They are not people, they are not their professions, they are not who they used to be, they're just safe. Ну а последний аргумент, который я вам еще чую, это то, что такие наплыв мигрантов и утекачев в Европу, и он погрожает исламизации Европы, ну и фактично возникновению такой европейской идентичности, как таковой. Well, those people who come to Western Europe, they actually are trying to get away from Islamic State, so they don't want Sharia law, they want the laws we actually have in Western Europe, yes, they are Muslims. So yes, they want to go to a mosque and they want to pray and do the things that Muslims do generally. But that doesn't necessarily mean that they are going to force us to behave different from what we used to do before. And um, Dutch society has actually had always had four, like we used to call them pillars, like Catholics, Protestants, um, Socialists and Liberals. And actually those four groups, all laws were designed to make sure that all those four groups could do whatever they wanted without interfering or without bothering the others. And because our laws are still like that, there is space for Muslims as well. And um, that, that somehow makes it possible that we have Muslim schools, which a lot of people don't like because it's outside the school system that we used to have. But it also means that there are no um, threats to us because they don't need to make us change things. And us with us, I mean the non-Muslim Dutch people. <laughs> um, so it's not, it is, that's not so much um, a threat like that. But what is a threat is that those Muslims in the Netherlands, they tend to be poor. They came to the Netherlands to do like handwork and to work in, in factories and things like that. So they live in deprived neighborhoods in comparison. And they feel like, especially young men, they feel like outcasts. And what connects them is Islam. So that means that that connects them and they actually become very active in them in that. And it actually 
could make them dangerous. And yes, it could make them dangerous to our society, but I doubt whether the solution is in being angry at Islam or at Muslims or whether it isn't actually giving them proper chances because that's it's happening at the same time. You cannot really divide the two. So it's this is just my opinion and my impression. I cannot say that I'm right because there's no research, but I have a strong feeling that it's not. Yes, there is a problem with young Muslim men in the Netherlands, for sure. But I'm not sure whether the problem is with them being Muslim initially. Я просто ведаю, что у Франка у тебя есть особистый досвид працы по допомозе утекачам, и может быть ты вдруг проспела, что робишь и каким чином ты працуешь за ними. Well, we started um, a website just over two weeks ago. It's um, "Ik wil iets doen voor een vluchteling" or "I want to do something for a refugee." And we try to bring together uh, supply and demand for refugee help because we saw a lot of Dutch people actually wanted to do to do something, either give money or give clothes or anything, but they didn't know how. And then you would have situations like people who would bring a, like a whole car full of bread to an asylum seeker center, but they don't need it. They already have that. Or just bring a lot of baby clothes to a house where only men live. And it's a pity because there are refugees who actually need those baby clothes. So we try to bring this together so that people can actually do something they like and that fits them and do that for people who actually need those skills or those products and that's we have over we have now over 2000 people already involved and try to connect um, each other and it's we try to keep the topic although it's a very very political topic we really try to keep it away from politics as far as possible so if people say i don't want more refugees coming to the netherlands i think that the neighboring countries should help those syrian people I personally don't agree, but I don't have to say that. I can tell them, well, those people in refugees, refugee camps, they also need help. So you can help them if that's your opinion. So we really try to keep it um, as apolitical as possible and just say that we care for supply and demand and bring projects and people together. And I think that this also will have, and that's, that's again a political opinion, so it's not an opinion of the side, it's my opinion, that it will... Um, that society will uh, benefit from it because refugees who get language courses, refugees who get invited for dinner at Dutch people's houses, they will it will be easier for them to be, to integrate into society, so yeah. they're less likely to be outcasts, so they are actually less likely to become a danger to our society. So I actually think that a language course or a dinner might be more effective against Islamization yeah, yeah, yeah. than actually banning mosques. So, but that's the what that's what what my website is trying to do, and well, we we are at the moment. We, it seems like there is a huge demand for a website like that because now everybody feels like oh, we have to do something. Also because of those negative racist remarks we heard, but also because in Germany they started with this Wir helfen campaign uh, that's uh, Bild Zeitung, a bi the biggest actually a right wing newspaper in Germany started the campaign We Help, and that also inspired Dutch people. So this combination that actually made so many people want to do something but they simply did not know how and normally government in the Netherlands takes care of those things but with this influx they simply we lack the infrastructure eventually it could end up in government hands again but at the moment we are just seeing a fire and you can wait for the uh, firemen to arrive but you can also try to <laughs> throw water at it yourself so that's basically what's going on Дякую великі Франка що погодилася прийняти дело в нашій передачі і вельми цікаво оповіла і про власний досвід і про в принципі бачення цієї ситуації можна сказати знутри Калиляска Дякую Ну, на гэтым ми будем заканчивать нашу передачу і наприканці просто хотілося б сказати, що Допомагать беженцам это вельми почесно и это вельми по человечи, потому что каждый из нас теоретично может понуться этим утекачом. Люди, когда разважают на этой теме, и они мало ведают про то, что бывает за Россию и в Ираку, где фактично возникли державы как таковые, где зародилась эта зява, как исламистская держава где фактично зруйнована вся инфраструктура и люди что дня подвергается небеспеции быть забитыми. Задумайтесь про это, Калиласка. До побочения.